In this first demo, uh, it's going to be about how to set up uh, MongoDB on your system. Uh, this uh, demo is going to be mainly uh, working on Windows, uh, but you can just like look up the steps uh, required to install and set up uh, MongoDB on your system if you are using uh, any other system such as Linux or Mac or any other operating system. But the concept behind this one, or let's say the, the objectives that we wanted to uh, achieve by going through this demo is to make sure that uh, our system has MongoDB installed and we can just like perform basic operations uh, to make sure that everything is working fine before we get to the next demo where we can just like consume MongoDB from our uh, Node.js applications. So when we say uh, basic operations, we are talking about how to create database, how to drop a database, how to create a collections, uh, drop collection, how perform uh, like let's say a specific task such as um, sending data to the database, updating, deleting, uh, query, how to do some uh, aggregation. So the whole thing is gonna be just like uh, live uh, experience. So let's try to make things uh, work faster and let's see how it turns. So the first thing to do is to just like go uh, look up MongoDB. Uh, download. And for sure you can, as we mentioned before, you can uh, use MongoDB on any other uh, service provider or any cloud service. But for now, we're gonna go with the MongoDB to make it work on our system. So once you go to the community downloads here, you can check uh, which operating system, which version you wanna work on. For me, I'm gonna just like go through, uh, let's say the latest, I'm gonna go with the latest one. So I will hit download here. Uh, yeah, it's gonna take some time. Once it's downloaded, then we can just like click on this one to start the installation process. It's really like straightforward steps. So here, make sure that you click on complete because you want to install like almost everything you need for now. So this is the most important part. Maybe like in the previous versions of MongoDB, you would usually just like do the installation then you will decide which way you want to interact with your uh, database. So uh, usually we'd have two ways to interact, either to go with the local, or we can just like have it as a network. So which means whenever, whenever we wanted to uh, reach to the database, then we'll reach through uh, some of the network protocols such as HTTP. So for now, I'm gonna just like make sure it's just like run a service as a network service user here. Uh, I will keep everything as it is, but it's really important to understand and to know where have you installed. If you want to change this uh, path here, then you will need to understand where did you install these, uh, let's say MongoDB because you're gonna need it uh, to set up the path in the right way. So for now, I'm gonna keep it as it is. Then click next and next here and install. Here click on yes. Yeah, so here, uh, he just like, once you're done with installing MongoDB, uh, it's gonna ask you to re uh, restart your operating system uh, to make uh, sure that everything has installed correctly. So before you go with this one, you have to make sure that everything uh, are saved because you will have to uh, restart your system. So here, I will ask like, okay, uh, I'm gonna go with okay, since close applications attempt to restart them. Okay, here. So the installation is gonna uh, take some time, it depends on uh, your system, but I'm gonna stop the recording here, I'll be back once it's done. 
Once you're done with the installation and you're ready to start your uh, computer here, uh, it's important to uh, know how to uh, know, like, let's say, the tools that you have installed to interact with uh, MongoDB. So the first one, which is going to be through the CMD. So if you go to CMD and if you type just like Mongo or Mongo, it's going to give you like Mongo is not recognized as an internal external command. And this is happening because the path of the, your installation is not defined in your system variables. So to make this work, first we will go with exit here. Then we will go to our Windows Explorer here. Then I would go to C and program files. You'll find your installation folders here. As you can remember, like where I already told you, make sure that you know where did you install your system. So the version that I'm using right now is 4.4. And this should be it. So Mongo is already here. So all you need to do is just like copy this uh, path here. Then go to PC, right click, properties here, advanced system and settings. Then you would go to environment variables here. Then make sure that you update the path for the system variables. So if you have more than one user or you want to access MongoDB like to be global for the whole system, you will have to go with path here. But if you want to say just like for you, then you can just like have it at, uh, like for the user. For me, I would go with system variables. Then I would go with path. Then click to on edit. Then I will go to new here. Then I'll paste this uh, location or path. Then I will click OK, OK, and OK. Now, if you're going to go to CMD, uh, Mongo, you can see it's now working. So whenever you type the command name Mongo here, and you can see like this is just like the command line or the terminal of Mongo uh, database. So all we need to go to do right now is to try to interact with uh, database. So I will have like uh, some uh, scenarios. I'll just try to make sure uh, we have everything you need. So the first thing is usually whenever you connect with the database, you want to see what are the database that is come with default installation. So, uh, so I can just like go with the command show. Usually you would use show command to see like uh, the things that you wanted to investigate or you wanted to see. So for now, you want to see what are the database that is installed, right? So we can just like do show databases. As you can see, the default installations, uh, installation here have, uh, let's say has three uh, default database names. So the first one is admin and the second one is config and local and as you can see here you can see like the size of each database okay so to see like uh, let's say the collections to see uh, any other stuff you would usually see like let's say show then collections but for now since we haven't added anything for now then you won't be able to see it so let's get started with uh, how to create a database. So creating database is just like fairly uh, simple. All we need to do is to use the command use and type the name of uh, the database here. Make sure that the name of the database is, uh, let's say, doesn't have any spaces or uh, any uh, special characters. So I would go with uh, testing mongo db okay so if you click on enter here as you can see it's going to give you a switch to database testing mongo db and this is just like really important part 
where you should uh, always be sure about it. So you might have multiple databases, but before to like before performing any task, you have to make sure that you are uh, on uh, the right track. You are in the right database. So for now, all the operations that I'm gonna do is gonna be on testing MongoDB. So to make sure that I'm using the right database, I would use the command use. So the way that use work is as follow. First, it's gonna go and check whether there's a database with this name. If not, then it's gonna create it for you. Okay, so you would expect if you do show database here, it should show, right? But this is just like usually people tend to get confused at this point. The problem with uh, your database not showing here is you haven't created any collection in your database yet. So to be sure, or to make sure that it's gonna be showing, you will have to start with, uh, let's say, creating collection, at least one collection, then you will be able to see it. So to make sure that we are on, like in the right database, you always can do DB. So DB is gonna tell you what are the name of the database that you are currently using. So here I would go with DB dot create collection. Then I would just like pass the name of the collection. So uh, I would call it testing collection. As you can see here, the response or the results here is gonna tell you okay one, which mean uh, the collection that you wanted to create is already uh, created. Now, if you go to show databases, you will be able to see your database. So a rule here, once you create your database, unless you create at least one collection in this newly created database, you will not be able to uh, see it. Okay, so to jump between any databases, you can always use the command use. So here I have like admin config lookup. I can just like say use admin. It's gonna switch you back to the admin database. So always to make sure which database you are currently working on, you can do DB. It's gonna show you which database you are currently on. And here to switch back to uh, testing MongoDB, you can use use testing uh, MongoDB. So here, let's go now with database. And now, since you already uh, added a collection, you can always do show collections. So this is gonna uh, list all the collections that you have. As you already know that we have a database or let's say a database file. This database file might have multiple collections, right? And each collection will have multiple documents as we already know from uh, the theoretical part that we went through uh, earlier. So now we have our uh, collection. You can always, as you just like create uh, a collection here, there are like another way to create a collection. So here we just like use the uh, API here, which is database create collection, right? So there's another way that you can uh, just like do, which is gonna be as follow. It's gonna be DB, then type the name of the collection that you wanted to create. Let's say testing collection uh, insert, for example. Or let's say, let's just like call it one for now. Then we can do insert and you will pass the document. So another way to create a collection is by trying to insert a new object or let's say a new document to the collection that is defined in this area. So I can do just like something like uh, 
and let's say ID something like this and as you can see the right results it's gonna give you the number of insert uh, records is just like one and if you can uh, if you want to check you can always use show collections then you will see these are the uh, collections that you have right now in your database so as I said uh, you can always pick wherever it's just like more convenient to you you may use create collections or you can just like use uh, this method here which is trying to insert just a document directly to your uh, let's say uh, to your collection so another thing that we usually uh, wanted to do is how to drop uh, a collection or how to drop a database right so to drop a collection is like straightforward stuff so all we have to do is just like do db a drop okay uh, let's say I want to drop testing collection one so I would go with testing you can always uh, use tab here so you can just like type the start of the collection name and hit tab it's gonna do auto completion for you all right then you can just like do drop here so I'm using the function of drop here so it's gonna give you true which means that like the operation has been done successfully so if I want to check whether the drop has been done successfully or not I can always uh, check through show collections as you can see it's already uh, dropped right so this is just like the basic stuff and to drop database you would usually go with db drop database and as you can see testing mongodb has been dropped so if I, I want to check I can go to show databases as you can see database is not available or it's not there anymore so now I will just like create another one MongoDB demo then I will create uh, I can check which database I'm currently on so it's MongoDB demo here then I can just like do database create oops collection then um, let's say names I will call the collection names okay so now I can verify that collection is there I can do show collections names are there so the first thing that we wanted to uh, learn is how to insert data into your uh, collection or in other word how to insert a new document into your uh, collection so it's just like fairly straightforward stuff always you can just like do DB then the collection name that you wanted to insert your document in so here I would go with names then insert here the passing parameter here or the passing value here must be an object or a JSON object right so I would go with ID number one and then I would go with name let's say Iman right so here all I have uh, to do is just like to insert one record right so this is just like how to insert one record at a time so you might ask yourself okay how do I verify whether your uh, record has been inserted or not as I can say like here it's always gonna tell you here how did the insertion operation uh, results so here it's gonna give you the right results 
has been successfully done since you already see the number of inserted uh, document here is just like one document. Uh, is there another way to check? Yes, there's always a way that you can just like use uh, a query to your database and you will check whether there's uh, something has been inserted or not. To check the content of your collection and or let's say to retrieve all the documents in your uh, collection, you might use something like this, then find and passing nothing here. This is almost equivalent to the thing that we can do in a relation database, which is select from uh, names. So it's going to be almost the same thing. So DB, the collection name, and the function find, it's going to give you the same uh, results as if you're going to use select uh, star from names. It's going to retain everything in your database. Okay, so here we can see this is just like the inserted uh, data here. And just like one thing to note here, which is the object that I have inserted was having like two uh, keys. The first one was the ID and the second one was the name. And as you can see here, the ID is already there and the name is already there. But there's one more thing which has, hasn't been created by me and it's also created by uh, MongoDB, which is this uh, object ID, which is used as an identifier to this object. In another word, this is uh, might be uh, represented as auto increment ID, as we, you would do with relational database, or just like this is just like a unique value that it's, it's created once you create uh, a new uh, record, and for sure you always can just like uh, delete or remove this uh, operation, all right? So another way, and it's just like in most of the time, you might need not just like inserting one uh, document, you might need to insert multiple documents here. And to be able to do it, all you will have to do is just like to pass uh, an array of objects and just like use the same functionality it's gonna give you the same effect so let's just like try to do one more thing here so uh, let's go with var let's define uh, a variable here and let's call it data and let's do one thing let's open uh, an array uh, symbol here so as you can see once you click on this one here, you can see that right now, it's just like waiting for your input to perform the whole operation. So all I have to do is just like I will insert one object here, then another object here, then I will close it. Most of the time, it's better to have every object by itself, but just like uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna have it this way. So. The thing that I wanted to insert is ID is going to be number two. And let's say the name should be Jack, for example. Okay. And the other one, I would give it to ID number three here. And I would go with name Fabio. Right, this should be done, and to just like give it an uh, let's say the end, you might want to add semicolon here at the end. Now we already have this variable, but how to insert this variable? So all we have to do is just like perform the same thing, which was db names insert and pass the data variable that you already created, right? So here, if you click enter, as you can see, bulk write results. And as you can see, if you're trying to insert more than one document, it's going to be 
uh, dealt with as a bulk uh, write operation. So here it's going to give you how many errors do we have, how uh, there's like a concern errors, or the number of inserted or even outserted, and we will just like know what does this mean uh, shortly. But these are the things, or let's say, the results that you got. So if you're trying to insert a bulk uh, of documents into your collection, uh, just like to get the indicator here on what, uh, or let's say, what is the number that you receive, uh, does it match or not? This is just like one way to verify. So another way, as usual, to verify is to just like fetch everything from database and we can do this one as find, as you can see, we have these all uh, values here. So another important thing, which is, uh, or let's say a concept, which you already uh, know from uh, JavaScript, which is chaining or pipeline. So the thing that we are using here, so names, then find, you always can pass or pass the output of this operation to a new function. So one of the things that you would usually want to do is to, uh, let's say, uh, set the limit or how to sort the data that you are going to uh, see, right? So here I can do just like limit. As you can see here, in name finds, whenever you uh, say it, uh, or release this uh, command, it's gonna return all the documents that you have in your collection. But let's say if you want to just like uh, bring two, two results instead of just like the whole things. Okay, then you can just like do something like limit. So the way it's working, the find here, the first part here, it's gonna return everything. Then the output of this operation will be passed as an input for the limit function here, and you will define what is the limit that you want to get here. So if we do something like this, as you can see, we have only like the number of uh, records, or let's say the number of documents that we wanted to uh, work with. So the most critical part here is you always can just like do something like this, and you can just like uh, attach as many operations as you want. Even you can do just like something like pretty, which is gonna just like show something like uh, JSON friendly stuff. So since we don't have that much of data here, it's not gonna be, uh, you will not be able to see this effect, but it's still something that you might wanna to understand that you might pass all these things together. So you might just like hook up here uh, a sort after the limit. So it's gonna give you like more uh, effects at the end. Okay, so now what if we wanna just like all these fetching data? As you know, query from your database is usually a core thing. So whenever a user or a visitor visits your website, he wants to see some data, right? Uh, this data, most of the time, is going to be dynamic, which is going to be fetched from your uh, backend. And whenever you fetch this data from your backend, it's either you have it as a setting, as we learned before, or you might have it as a database, right? So sometimes you don't want to show everything. What if a user, just like have, let's say, you have a list of uh, posts in your uh, blog, for example. And the user wants to just like access or to see the details of one specific post. How are you going to tell MongoDB how to just like fetch one uh, thing? Okay, so to be able to fetch just like one uh, document here, you always can pass one thing here, which is what is the criteria that you wanted to apply. So here, if I want to just like fetch the uh, 
like let's say the document that has the ID 3. So I would go with ID, then 3. As you can see, the best value here is just like an object. So always, whenever you wanted to pass something, you have to pass it as an object. So this one is completely uh, equivalent to select from names where ID equal 3, if you are familiar with uh, SQL. So this line here, it's going to give you the same thing as the same effect as the uh, SQL that you got. So here I can see, as you can see, the return value, it's going to be just the one that you uh, are uh, looking for. We know that sometimes we uh, might have a range of values, not just like one uh, value. So in MongoDB, we have something we call it operators. So it's give you like many uh, operators that you may use uh, in your uh, examples. So here, let me just like change one thing here. What if I wanted to return, what if I wanted to return uh, all the records that has ID more than one? Okay, so I can do something like this. I can use a specific operator. And by the way, the operator in MongoDB or the predefined operators in MongoDB usually would start with uh, a dollar sign here. So I can do something like GT or greater than. Then I can do the value. So this one is equivalent to something like from names where id greater than or equal 1. So uh, is there like any other operators that I may use? Yes, you always can go to documentation here. We can go Google. Then we can go to Mango DB uh, operators. And even you can just like do something like cheat sheet. As you can see, these are many operators that you can do. Here, GT is greater than, GTE is greater than or equal, LT, all these kind of stuff. It might be uh, useful to you in case that you have some uh, functionality for it. But for now, I just like wanted to return all the records that has an ID greater than one. And in this case, as you can see, the return value here is just like two and three because it's uh, greater than one. So if I change this one to greater than or equal, this is gonna return like from the starting point that we uh, got so far. Okay. So another thing that we uh, wanted to uh, or most of the time we wanted to just like uh, return one value or let's say um, one column or one key. How can we just like do something uh, like this? And how we can just like, uh, let's say, if we wanted to return just like the names, we, are, we don't care about uh, the ID now for this specific task. So, all we can do, we can do something like uh, this. So here, I can just like pass nothing or an empty uh, object. Then I can do one thing here, which is it's going to be what is the name of the field or the key that you wanted to restore or uh, retrieve. So here, I just like wanted to restore uh, or retrieve uh, names, then I'll give it one, which means true, okay? And if you want to return the ID, which is this one here, or underscore ID, you can just like have it this way, or you can just like do, if you want to discard it, you may do something like this. Now, if we hit enter here, as you can see, he just like uh, the system brought 
uh, all the documents with just like one value. So this command, it's equivalent to uh, select name from names. It's gonna give you the same effect as you would do with your, uh, let's say, uh, relation database, right? So what if you wanted to do sorting for this kind of stuff? So I can do here, sort, okay? And for sort, you want to sort the record by what? You would usually here, you would need to have a sorting uh, key and whether you want to ascend in an ascending order or in a descending order. So here, since I'm just like, uh, bringing, uh, so here, so let's go with db names dot find, then uh, yes, so here we can do something like sort and we will pass just like the field or the key that we wanted there, let's say name, and the type of order. So if you type one, it's gonna be in ascending order. If you type minus one, it's gonna be in descending order. So for now, I'm gonna just like pass it as a descending order, as you can see from Jack to Fabio here. And if you want to have it in ascending order, then you may pass one here. And as you can see, it's just like in ascending order. So these are just like some uh, tasks that you would usually uh, do uh, when you wanted to uh, fetch some data. And you might ask yourself, why do we have to work with it this way? It's important to understand how to interact or most of the time, how the interaction with your database is done in a uh, most basic part. So when you move to uh, using like, or interacting or integrating your database with uh, a new technology such as Node.js, then you will be able to figure out whether the problem is coming from your application or there is a problem with your database, right? So another task, we already learned how, uh, uh, create a database, uh, database, how to create and drop collections, how to insert data, how to insert bulk data, how to uh, perform some uh, query uh, operations. So right now, we wanted to see like how to update some entries in our uh, database. And for most of the time, uh, you might have like multiple ways to perform or achieve the same operations. For you, it might look uh, almost the same thing, but in some cases, like one method might give you like more uh, functionalities or more features to perform instead of just like one thing. So to update a database, you may uh, go with either one of these two options. So the first one is gonna be just like using update, so this is just like an, uh, one way. And the other way is to just like use safe function. And we'll go through uh, both of them to just like understand what's the difference between uh, these two methods, okay? So for the update, most of the time you will pass two main thing. So the first thing that you would want to pass to update is the criteria, the first one. And the second one is the update object. And this is just like really important to know what kind of, uh, let's say parameters, uh, the function would expect from you. So let's say I wanted to update the first uh, record or the first doc document here. I keep saying record, which is not right if you are using NoSQL. So right now, uh, since we are using NoSQL, 
then we should say document, right? So the first thing is to pass the criteria. So the criteria, it's the same thing as if you would have done it with, uh, let's say, if you want to find a specific uh, value as we did in this line. So here, I just like wanted to update the document that has the ID of one. And this is just like the uh, criteria, right? So the other parameter, which is the updated object, should be, you should always use an object as a new, uh, let's say, uh, data here, or the updated document. So here, we are going to use one of the operators which is going to do the uh, update. So I'm going to use set, right? Then I will use the object that I wanted to update here. So right now, what I wanted to update, what keys I wanted to update. Let's say I wanted to update just like the name. I will call it Ayman, update it. Okay, so this is just like a normal one to, to be sure. This is just like the criteria, and this is the new, uh, let's say, object that I wanted to update. Let's hit enter here. So the right operation is going to tell you what is your results. So how many matches that we got, which is just like one, and how many inserted or upserted here? And we will just like uh, know what does this mean in a bit. And modified, how many records has been modified? Whenever you wanted to interact with these results or you wanted to receive like these results, you wanted to uh, know how um, to just like perform or show some uh, errors or some messages to uh, the visitor of your website to tell you like what kind of formation or uh, like the results of the operation that you had uh, done uh, earlier. Okay, so this is just like an, a normal one. But let's see now, one thing, I'm not sure like uh, if you have noticed or not, but let's go with find here and let's see how things are going here. So here, as you can see, the name should be fine. Everything should be fine. Sometimes, sometimes, and maybe an older version, if you pass the object in a wrong way or you miss one of the keys, it's going to just like overwrite the things that you got in here. So make sure that you update your things in the right way, right? So let's see. Uh, what if we wanted to update multiple, uh, let's say, documents at the same time? Or in another word, we wanted to do a bulk update. We had uh, just like individual insert and we have bulk insert. And the same thing, we have individual update and we have uh, bulk uh, update. So to be able to do this, we will do uh, just like one thing here. So I would say the ID, mm, yeah. So let's say, let's use something that we learned already. So I'm gonna go with get uh, greater than or equal, or let's say just greater than or equal one. So in this case, any ID, uh, yeah, any, ID that ha is more than one, it should be updated to I'm an update. Or let's say I'm an bulk update. So we can uh, be sure what's going on, right? Now, is this enough? This is going to do just like for one record or for the first uh, value that it's found. To make it as a bulk, all you need to do is just like pass one parameter here, which is gonna have 
multi which means I wanted to update for multiple uh, documents at the same time and we will pass the value of true right so here as you can see the number of documents that we had matched is two and the modified ones are two right so let's see now what we got as you can see we had these values in our database right so let's try to do uh, one thing which is we already know what does uh, in matched means modified means insert uh, absurd means let's try to just like do one update here which is gonna be something like four in our database we don't have any document that has the ID of four right so we should not do that or at least the database should not perform or uh, let's say the results should not be uh, any problem right so here as you can see if you list this or issue this command it's gonna give you like there's zero match zero absurded and zero modified that means I cannot find the document that uh, match the criteria that you passed right so we can do another thing here which is what if we wanted to update if the document is there and if the document is not in our collection then we can just like do uh, an insert so it's almost the same thing as the command replace so in relation database what we do with the replace command is first the replace command is going to check whether this rec record is available in database or in the table uh, or not if it's available then it's going to do update operation if it's not uh, uh, it's not available then it's going to uh, give you as an insert operation so here to make it work as absurd and this is just like by the way this is the meaning of absurd absurd means update or insert okay all we can do is just like pass another parameter here which is going to be something up cert and up cert here should be true and always you can just like go to google.com for example and you might type let's say uh, mongodb up cert you see in the update here if you go back to the update you can always see everything you uh, need and we already like worked with multi and we are now working with absurd and the good thing about mongodb it has really good uh, documentation and examples for almost everything you need so here if we do this As you can see the right results there is zero match and there is zero modified but since the document that you were trying to update is not available and you already pass abs uh, abs absurd to true then there is a new absurded one so if you go back now to check what are the objects that you got in your or let's say the documents you got in your uh, collection you'll find it's already there right so this is just like uh, one way of doing it um, another way to do uh, the update or uh, updating their like the document in your collection is by using uh, save so here I can go with DB names save so in save most of the time you would have to pass two parameters the first one which is gonna be just like using the object and the other one is the record so here let's see what's the difference between 
uh, these two operations. What's the difference between update and save? And why it's really important to understand what's going on. So let's say I wanted to use the object ID. So just like to show you how does this thing work. Let me just like copy this one. So this is just like the criteria that I'm gonna use. I just like wanted to show you that you can use this uh, index here because it's already unique. So you can use it as an identifier for the document that you want to deal with. So the thing that you wanted to update, for example, here, I'm gonna do almost the same thing, which is, uh, let's say, name. I mean, update from save function. Okay, and let's go with enter. So it's gonna give you the same right results. Now, let's see what's the difference. So the difference here in update it's gonna update just like the specific key value. It's not gonna touch anything in the document. But here, if you don't pass the whole object, or let's say uh, the whole string for the whole object, which is the ID and the name, you will not be able to perform save. So save is usually when you have like a full, let's say, uh, a whole object that you wanted to save or update, but usually I would go with updates, so it's more a uh, saver for us. Okay, so these are the things that we uh, just like did. So now we know how to insert documents, how to update, how to query documents, but we haven't learned yet how to do a deletion or how to delete a specific, uh, let's say, uh, document. So it's quite uh, easy. It's the same thing with names dot remove, and you will pass just the parameter that you wanted to use. So let me try to just like use this parameter here. So it's going to give you the number of removed is just like one. And to verify, we can just double check that what we got there in our database, right? So these are just like the basic operations. There are like more operations that we usually uh, work with. One of them is just like to do aggregation, for example. What if you wanted to, uh, let's say, get the number of documents in one uh, in one collection, for example. So this is just like a simple uh, way and always you can just like go with Mongo DB aggregations and you can see there's like almost everything for aggregation, even like there's some task. For me, I would go with just like count the number uh, as I can, like as I said, you can always perform uh, operations such as uh, submission, uh, averaging, uh, count all the aggregation functions that you used to have back in relational database. You would have it the same thing in uh, let's say in our MongoDB, but it's still like has different way to do it, but it's still uh, supported here in NoSQL database. Okay. Uh, more specifically in MongoDB. So we can do something like DB, then uh, names, and let's go with aggregate. So in aggregate, what we wanted to do, usually you would have to pass what is the, the matching criteria, and you will have to pass the aggregation function that you want to have. So in this case, 
since I'm gonna pass multiple stuff, I'm gonna pass it as an array here. Let me just like do it this way. This array, let's start with the first object. So the first object here, I would go with match. So the match, there's, as I said, there's uh, operator match. I wanted to match this specific parameter here. So what I wanna do is just like, uh, let's say, by the ID, since I, it's just like the numerical one that I want to create. So here I will do all numbers, uh, let's say, greater than or equal to one. So this is the matching. So here I'm saying that I want to aggregate all the, uh, the documents that has an ID more than or equal or greater than or equal to one. And the uh, other thing that I wanted to do is just like, what is the aggregation function that I wanted to create? I would go with count. And here I want to uh, just like say, uh, what's the name of the output? So I'm gonna say number of, um, not records, of documents. And I will close this off here. Then, yeah, sometimes it's, it's just like weird. How does it work? So let me just like do it all in once. Names dot aggregate. I just like want to make sure it's written right. So here, this is the first parameter, and this is the second parameter here. So match should be an object with an ID. I wanna go with GTE equal one, and this is done, and here, Let's just go with count and count as you can see it's count here and also as I can like as I said here you can specify whatever you want number of records you can see the number of records and as you can see it has the same thing so the last thing that i want to talk about which is really important for you which is the index so indexing is a really uh, important uh, topic uh, i don't I, I don't i just like don't want to go uh, too deep into indexes since you already uh, you must have uh, background about indexes and how it does affect your uh, database design. So if you go back to your uh, like database course, you already know from there that the indexes, it's give you like more power in terms of uh, speed for your uh, query. But we know always, always we know that indexes is good for query, bad for update operations, or let's say any update, delete, or insert. So if you want to go with indexes for your uh, database design, just like make sure that you uh, are uh, aware of the things that you are doing. So it's good to have indexes in your uh, databases, but it's not a good idea or it's not good practice to have uh, too many uh, indexes and like in a way that you wanted to increase the performance of your uh, query for example so it depends on uh, your uh, use case but just like if you want to go with implementing uh, indexes just like make sure that you have the right choice so in MongoDB you always can have like as many as you want of indexes 
that doesn't mean that it's not gonna hurt your uh, system, but it's gonna give you like the ability to perform and design whatever you uh, want. So to start off with this topic, let's go with database here and let's go with the names. Let's check what are the indexes that we got or we have here in our one. So we can go with get, I believe get index. Yeah, I believe, yeah, get index is not function. We can go with get indexes. Hmm. Mm. Let me just like try to do one thing here. MongoDB dot get let's say get indexes. Yeah, it's already there, but I'm not sure like whether it's support or not. So let's copy it from here. Let's go. Yeah. I think I know why. Yes. So the index that we got so far is just this underscore ID, which is the one generated by uh, MongoDB whenever you want to create a new, uh, let's say, uh, a new uh, document. So how to create your own indexes or even how to drop uh, one of these uh, indexes, you always can do something like db names, uh, I believe it's create index, create index, then you will pass the parameter that you wanted to have it as an index. And for sure, you always can have multiple uh, indexes, as I said, but it's not recommended to have like more than what you need. So here, I want to have uh, the ID field as one. So here, one, it doesn't mean that for the first document, it means true or false. So here, I'm just like saying the ID, I want to have ID as an index. So that's why I'm passing one, right? So here, as you can see, the output of create index is going to give you just like before indexes, the number of index was one, as we saw here, it's just like one. And after performing this operation, which is create index, the number of indexes after is two. So to verify how many indexes do we have right now, we can see that we got two parameters, right? Or let's say two indexes here. So let's go with, just like try to see if it's gonna make it any better here. Yeah, it's not gonna work here. Yeah, it's not something that you can attach it to uh, get indexes, okay? But the thing is here right now is we have two indexes. So what if you wanted to drop this index or delete this index? So all we need to do is just like to do something like names, then drop, I think it's drop index. And as usual, you would pass the ID of the uh, key that you want to delete. So here, I wanna go with ID one. So number of indexes is two. So this is gonna show you something before the operation. So as you can see, the index has been deleted. Okay, so this was all just like basic operations about MongoDB. As I said, it's important for you to understand how to interact with uh, MongoDB without any, uh, let's say, any uh, API or any other integration tools. In case something happened, then you might know what's going on. So with the latest version of uh, MongoDB, there's another tool that they provide, which is 
uh, MongoDB uh, campus, uh, campus here. So MongoDB campus is really uh, give you, is gonna give you a really good way to visualize and to perform almost most of the tasks that you performed. We can just like do it through a graphical user interface. And even you can just like have multiple uh, visualization stuff, all these kind of stuff. So you might ask yourself, why do I need to go with a command line if I have graphical user interface? Uh, and to answer that, not all the time you will have the same functionality or you will have the same uh, flexibility or freedom to pick wherever you want to install in your system. Uh, sometimes you might not be allowed to have a graphical user interface, or even you might use uh, one of the operating system that this graphical user interface is not working on that specific operating system. So here, what I wanted to do is just like to connect to our server. And to connect to our server, uh, if you remember uh, when we installed uh, the database or when we installed MongoDB, we did choose to go with network surface. So to be able to connect with your uh, MongoDB, it's usually listening to, uh, or let's say listening on your system. So it's almost the same thing as whenever you back in, like in the previous uh, lessons, you learned something like local host, for example, 3000 to access to your server. So we will do almost the same thing here. So I will go with Mango, uh, Mango DB. That means I want to connect through the Mango DB protocol here. Then I, I want to go with localhost and the default port number for this one, it should be 27017. And that's it, I, I think we should be good, yes. Yes, so now, as you can see, we can almost see almost everything that we already did. You can create a database from here. You can see like the number of documents here, which is reflect the number of records that we got, the, av the average, everything that you need. You might go there, you might check what kind of data do you have. So. Almost everything you've done there, you can just like create it here and you do. You might do some uh, extra work. But as I said, uh, I won't go with uh, a demo on this one. You can just like investigate it yourself. Just make sure that you understand and you are able to interact with your uh, database from the command line.